Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Out on the boat with my best boy. Yeah. We're out early doors, aren't we? Yeah. An early start this morning. Yeah. James and I are just going to be taking advantage of the wonderful weather that we have. And James has been challenging me to a fishing competition forever. Somehow he believes that he can catch more fish than me. I think he's probably right. <laughs> just quietly nodding away in the background there's going to be some limitations on my fishing being that I can only use one rod, one lure, one hook that type of thing, James can do whatever he wants but yeah, we're going to be doing a bit of mixed fishing we're going to be fishing over some banks, over some reef uh, anchor on a drift, all that type of stuff we're just out to catch some fish yeah, you ready? yeah let's go I've been bringing James on this boat with me since he was old enough to sit up as a child Every single time we used to come down, I would get him to do one more job. So now he knows in what order to take the ropes off, I would drop the engine down, I would check the batteries, I would start the engine, check the telltale, and also, I would skip the boat. So if ever there was the worst could happen and I could go overboard, James can come and get me. All at nine year old. Right, I'm ready skipper. Let's go. They're all around, aren't they? Oh, there he is. Under the boat. In front of the boat. They're busy, I'll give them that much. Yeah. <laughs> Should we go fishing now? Yeah, we'll leave these guys to it over here and then we'll go somewhere else. Yeah. Let's have a look in our little bag of tricks, box of tricks. Now James today is going to be using a mixture of rods and rails, but this is a slow pitch jigging rod that I bought in Florida with a Fathom low profile 300. I'm using the larger one, I'm using the 400. And you've got in your box... Mm -hmm. A special box of lures. Yeah. yeah. This was a this was a present from our friends at Sidewinder, and it allows James to keep a perfect selection of jigs and lures. So he's got jigs and lures in one side, haven't you? Yeah. And you've got some soft plastics in the other. I'm going to be using a variety of these now. We're going to be fishing little jigs on the jigging rods and maybe soft plastic lures on the spinning rods. Now I am going to use, I'm going to use a 40 gram jig. What do you want to use? Ooh. 30 or 40? 30. 30, great. There you go best man. You going to go hook it on? Yeah. yeah, we're just going to be drifting over an area of reef while we've got a little bit of tide. Try to pluck out. A pollock or a bass. Maybe even a ras if we're really lucky a codling. Yeah. What a fine morning to be out. Right, you know what you're up to? Go for it. I'm using the 400. James is using the 300. I've also got the Gamexus power handle on here. I used this reel away in Norway and the little handle just wasn't enough. Where's Cuckoo Ras? Ah. Oh, ah. <laughs> a little pouchy. Ah. Oh. I think we can count that one. Wait. It's alright, we can still count it. Just drop it back down, James. So does that mean we're, we're one all? Yep. Yeah. Two different one. species, but one one all. Oh, I see a Johnny fish. Two Johnny oh, fish. Yeah. No, Red. How you doing? Not so bad. Give it a proper Any jig. Joy? Sorry? Any joy? We've only just arrived, mate. Oh, have you? Oh, right. Good. 
I'm going to try a different reef. I'll be hiding. Oh, got you. Give me the bridge. Okay, I've got another one. Wind it all the way up and drop back down again. Yeah. That would definitely help us to catch some dinosaurs, wouldn't it? That would definitely help us to catch some dinosaurs. There you go, oh. fish. Well done. Have you got? This got I, have, uh, I don't know, James, how many species have I got? I've had a wrasse, a mackerel, and a scad. Three. Yeah. And I've got two. Oh, yeah. another one. Oh, I've got two! Well, well done, bring them in quick. Bring them in quick, or you're going to lose them. Oh no. Two big ones! Right, remember what we said before about. Yeah. James has caught up straight away just in one go. Oh. When you're when you're bringing them up, you've wheel, you've reeled a little bit too close to the rod tip, haven't you? Okay. Found a nice little patch of fish there. I think we'll go around that again. I don't know what score we're on. What I'll do is I'll film it all and then I'll add them all up. Look at how big that compass trolley fish is. Blimey, that is a big one. I'll get a little bit of video of that. Coco Ras. A beautiful one. When you're, when you're really in, you want to stop that far from the top, okay. okay? So you can swing it in and catch it. That's a pretty one. It is a pretty one. There we go. Ooh. Good man. Oh, he looks like a scrapper. It is. Oh, nice stop. Right, come round. Come back to me. Come back, come back, come back, James. That's a big one. See, that's how you do it. Next time, walk backwards a little bit so that I can lift it into that the boat. That was a big one. That was a big one. Oh, that's a big one. That is a very pretty one. And a big. There you go. Male cuckoo ras. Do you want to try winding it in and pull it going back? Oh, oh. oh! Something wrong with my hooks on the bottom. I keep letting fish off. Does that one count or not? I think it should. Ah, you think it should? Oh, thank you. Got one fish. on the way up. Well done. Me too. We found them mackerel again, look. My oh. first Yeah, James is absolutely thrashing me. Turn into another one. There might be two. Whoa! You're in a bit of line away, then, wasn't Yeah. What have you got? I don't know. Oh, well done. Keep going. Mm. No, sorry, you keep going. I'll get out of your way. Oh, well done, James. Good work. Oh. oh, no, you've just got really light drag. You've been messing with your drag, that's what the problem is. It's just a monster, monster mackerel. Oh! You can't... What's happened is this is the drag on here. And the reason why it felt like it was so big and you couldn't reel it in is because you'd loosened the drag off. Scud. Oh my gosh! That is a big scud. Yeah, that is a big horse mackerel, that one. Mm-hmm. Oh! Bush! Yeah. That's all of our bait. That's all the bait that we need for today, isn't it? Yeah. Right. When you get the on the bottom, wind down like that. You bounce it out there. So. All you need to do is wind down towards the water, put your thumb on the spool. Give it a jig like that, it bounces it out. There you go. Do you want to wind up and drop back down or do you want to stay down there? I'm going to stay down here. Okay. I think if we catch any more mackerel or any more scad, we we'll might as well let them go because we have plenty of bait. Yeah, if we catch a bass or pollock, we'll keep. Okay. Well, yeah, I agree with that. 
Oh, we've got one. one. Right, there's another mackerel. Oh, James, we've got it. Get after it. So once you had a bite, you want to keep going at it. Oh! Yo! See, give them slack and they'll come off. You might say that me and James are losing the odd fish at the side of the boat and you're coming off the trebles. Oh, that's a good fish. I've done that on purpose. I have crushed the barbs of the trebles. Just so it makes for easier unhooking because every now and again you do catch a fish that you do want to release. And treble hooks generally, they, they stick well into them. Whoa. Oh, skinny mac. There you go, see? I'll count that one as a catch. Scotty. Yeah, I wonder whether or not we can limit it to 10 fish of a certain species each. Oh, big horse mackerel. Oh, well done. Oh, and I've got a big mackerel as well. But I might keep that mackerel, that's a really good one. No, we'll let it go. We don't need to keep everything, do we? No. We'll only keep stuff that are edible. Got spiked? Yeah, a little bit. Where are the spikes? He's got a spike on his bum. Right near his anal fin, there's a spike. How many fish do you reckon we could catch today? Uh, I think we can catch over 100. Well, if we get 50, that would be good. The bait has dried off a little tiny bit. I'm going to dispatch all these fish in this live bait tank and then we're going to go and move to a different mark. Because all we're catching here is mackerel and scad, and we have all the mackerel and scad we need. You're really not giving me a chance today, are you? They're not giving me a break. Oh, oh cuckoo rice. Let me unhook this cuckoo. Oh, there's a fish. There you go, there's your balloon rice. Oh, fish! Oh, well done. There you go. James has had a nice balloon rice. So you're still winning on species because you've had a pouting and I haven't had a pouting yet. Yeah. Well done. Uh, cooker. Female cuckoo ras. And that's a little red one. Yep. Yeah. I think we're going to have to move to a different spot because all we're catching is little ras. Right. We'll continue this for about another 15 or 20 minutes. Then I might go to a different bit of rock and we'll use a bit of ragworm and try and pull out a big ballon ras. Or a bat. Yeah, or a bass. You seem fixated on them bass. Yeah, I want to catch bass today. Cuckoo! Right, let some line off. Told you. Hey, there you go. If you try and lift it up on the rod, you can snap the rod. Right, so reach down. There you go, good man. Swing it aboard. Drop him back. Good man. Yeah, let's try another spot. James is now going to fish with a ragworm on the bottom for a ballon ras and I'm going to chuck a soft plastic around. Try and see if there isn't a sneaky bass or a pollock hiding anywhere. Because they were non-existent at that other spot, were they James? No. Right, you know what you're doing don't you? Yeah. Does it come off? Yes. What are you doing? What? <laughs> what are you doing? You're not supposed to let them all go. Right, try again. Like I said, big strike. Come on, you got it. Big strike. Oh! Whoa. That's a line There you go. See this? See how much line you've got off here? Uh -huh. That's how much line you need to have off. Another lovely ballon rest for James. I'll show you again. Right, you're on the bottom. Right, there look, see? Lift it up. There you go, see? There you go. There's no two the same, they've all got different colours on them. How many ballon rosters is that now that you've had two? 
The reason why we're fishing like this now is because we're on slack water, we're on the slack part of the tide. Oh, I missed one. Well done. Okay. Yep, James is still kicking my bum, catching the cuckoos. Yeah. Another ballon. Lift it up. Perfect. Right, we're only catching small ones here. I think we need to go and try somewhere else. You get splashed. <laughs> you get splashed in it. Sorry. Yeah, we're only catching small ones here. We're going to go and try a different spot. Oh, good man. Oh, it looks like a scrapper. Yeah. Are you, oh, I see a tiny little compass ready fish there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, just keep concentrating on what you're doing because you're playing a fish up, aren't you? Oh, Coco oh that's a big one, isn't that it? That is a pretty one, right? Do you want to come to your set? Oh, I think I've got one as well. Do you want to go to the other side? The other side? Just going to stand my rug up there. There'll be your fish. Back up, back up, back up. Wow, that is a very pretty one, James. And big. There you go, look. These are probably one of the most attractive fish in UK waters. Oh, well done, James. I've, I've got a fish on it now, James. Right. Pop the shock out. Me. There you go. Play that fish, you going to rebate this? Or are you going to bring mine? Yeah, I'll bring yours Oh, thank you. Yeah, all I'm doing with James is. He's just no, another oh, cuckoo ras. Just baiting it with a little bit of ragworm. We're not getting away from these things. No, there's a lot of them about today, isn't there? All that James is fishing with is just a very, very simple one hook paternoster. And you're just baiting a little bit of ragworm on there, right? Yeah. Yeah. But he's doing a trick. Oh, there's a fish. This little patch of ground that I've come to, we're not really moving over it. I was hoping there was going to be a nice sized ballon ras, not just yeah. small ones. There you go. There's one. Cuckoo ras. Oh, that was a good strike. Yeah, you, need to, you need to really set the hook into them, James. A little tiny ballon. This isn't showing, this isn't making me think there's a big one down there. Mm -hmm. Another cuckoo ras. I'm just not, we're not getting away from them. We just can't get a break from the cuckoos. <laughs> the cuckoos? The cuckoos. <laughs> Another what? one. But I tell you what, he is very, very bright. They're just stunning. Right, good jigs and bounces, go on, you got it. Good man. Good lad. Sometimes the only way you can you can help people to learn is, is by letting them letting them lose fish, letting them mis make mistakes. Oh what we got? Ballon Rass. Tell you what, he's got a nice tail. Stop. See? Don't let it get too close. Swing around. Right, well does this one count as mine or yours? Because it was on my, on my rod. I landed it so it counts as mine. Oh, is that how it works? Yeah, that's my turn, got, it's got bright blue and green in his tail. Yeah, like that. Take your right worm by the head and just thread it up the hook. Like that. And then I always pull the head up past past the eye of the hook so it doesn't slide down as much. Oh, I've got that one. Haven't we just seen this one? No, no. The one that I just had was had a light blue and green tail. No, was it slightly bigger as well? I think it's slightly smaller. Well done. Oh, it looks like a good one. Yep. And what it feels got? What like have a good one. Ah, a little ballon uh -huh. rass. Right, back 
up, back up. Haven't I just caught this thing? I think you have. No, it's got more blue on it. Yeah, I think James has already caught this one. What do you think? I think I have. Same blue tail? Right, I think that we've I think we've found all the fish that we're gonna find in this mark. I think we'll go and try somewhere else. We might try out in the sand, drift about for a gurnard. We're gonna do a little bit of drifting over a bank. See if we can't find some white in some gurnards, probably find some dogfish, that type of thing. James is gonna cut us up some bait and I'm gonna make us up some rigs. Good man. James is going to be fishing a two down rig and I'm going to, because I'm limited to one hook, I'm going to be fishing a one down rig. And this is it really simply. You have a sliding ledger, so the lead slides about. And you've just got two, two hooks below the lead with little hooks and strips of the mackerel. <laughs> James has got two rods with two hooks in each one. And I've just started getting a bite on mine. I was like, oh, I'll bring that in. I was like, all right, you've got two rods and you've got four hooks and I've got one rod and one hook. And yet you think you can reel mine in on my rod. <laughs> <laughs> all around the sides of the boat now, just stacks and stacks of tiny sand eels. I think that's what they're going to be feeding on. Everything's going to be eating them. So yeah, even though we cut our baits really, th really thin and small strips, it might still be a little bit too big. We'll drift up and down this bank for about maybe 15, 20 minutes, see what we can pick out and then go and put the anchor down on, a, on an area of ground. I like some water. Right. James has managed to find himself a whiting. Cover it in. 48 meters of water, so yeah, it, it is a little bit of a way for him to wind up. Dogfish. I'm winning in the species. There we go. And a proper strike. When you get a good bite, give it one. Is that enough? Is that enough of a strike, do you think? Two dogfish for me. Right, another dig door dogfish. A little fish catching machine. I think after we've finished our sandwich, the reason I've come here to fish on this little bit of sand like this is because it's dinner time. And I thought it would be easier for us to have a couple of sandwiches while we're drifting over here. No, you just haven't got any, any chance to eat your sandwiches finished, have you? I've had one and I've just got one there. Halfway through his sandwiches. And so is this one. So we're going to have to put four dog fish. Yeah, they're the same size as well, aren't they? Hmm. Yeah, I think this is a bit longer. Now get your sandwich down, you quick. Non stop. Like I said, I don't know how many fish we've had. Hopefully I'll have been able to keep counting the video. That rod has been on the bottom about 20 seconds. So we've got a dogfish on that rod there and a dogfish on this one here. Hang about, hang about, hang about. That can wait. Suntan top up. Put your cap off. Another dingo dogfish. Dogfish Central. Can we just have a break from the dogfish? 
we'll reel these lines in in a minute when you've finished our food. And I'll get the anchor ready and we'll go put the anchor down on a piece of rock and see if we can't catch a ling. Or a bolus. Yeah, a ling or a bolus. Or a conger. And then after that, possibly a conger. Try for a ling. After that, then we'll go we'll put the anchor down and try and catch some rays. In the right spot. You happy? I'd say so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, turn the engine up. Right, that's good enough. What are you gonna do in your lake fishing? That's good enough, let's get some baits down there for some ling, some conger and some bullos. Yep. Uh, On the big rod, we have a mackerel flapper on a heavy sliding ledger. Yes. Yeah, we are, we're holding all right. We're just on the edge of a piece of rock in 62 metres of water. Hoping to pull out either a big bull hus or a ling or maybe even a conger. Just some different species. At the same time, James is going to, put, going to be putting down one of his one-up scratching rigs. Because there could be a bream, there could be a pouting, there could be a rockling, there could be anything like that. Pick the jigging rod up and get it out of my way, please. We have got a bit of tide here. And James's rod was wrapped round a little bit. Oh, there yeah, it is, look. Just spot the hook out, James. See? Oh, yeah. Oh well, I hope you saw it, that was a nice congreal there. We're messing around because James had dropped his little rod down and had come back with a poor cod on and it had got wrapped around this line and I was busy trying to untangle it and I could feel there was a fish on the end. So all it's had chance it's just as, as it's fought up and as it's rasped and pulled around, it's rasped through the line. But yeah, that was a congreal there of about, about 10 pound. Tie another hook on and we'll get sent back. But yeah, they're there. And James is, like I say, he's fishing with a jigging rod with a one hook rig. Just for everything else that's down there. Yep. Come on, get out of that rock. No, it's a big fish, but it's, it's jammed itself up in the stone. That's a big fish. I just saw the bite and I didn't get the camera on in time. All right, stick my gloves on, try and get this out. I can feel the fish moving down there. Right. Fish has let go, but at least I've got my gear back. Huh? Yeah, it's like that. No, I didn't. It's a oh, balan ras. It's a surprise. And it is a very pretty. And a big one. It's got a very pretty tail on it. Yeah, and it's got some blue bits on its face as well. Yeah. yeah. If you can see, there's blues on its tail. And all along its body. 
Yeah. But you saw how high how hard I had to set the hook, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Good hard strike, remember? You got it? Yeah, yeah, it's there now. That is a very good one, James. Here you go. Don't let you any slack. Still got it? Move that way a little bit. Mm, you got it. I think I'm going to wind mine up and trim my bit. Another one with a really pretty blue tail. I don't know well you can see it. Got you. Have you got a fish on or not, James? No. If you haven't, then, then don't bother winding up. This is a heavy fish, this. This side of me. There you go. You stand there and you catch your fish. Good man. Have you got it? Conger eel. Oh! Said it was a big one, didn't it? It's not a bad size eel, that. Yeah, said it was a big one. guy is a proper one. Yeah, this one is a proper one. This is a this is a decent sized eel this. You come up here for a second you're gonna help me T-bar it off. Right. Go around this side of me. It's not a little one, it's a proper one. Keep up, please. Up it up. Up. Where are you going? There it goes, look, see. Ah, there you go, see. That one there was just, just a nuisance. <laughs> it was just. Playing hard to get. Every time I tried to get the tea bar in there, it just big clean under the tea bar. And yet, it. This is why you need to use a strong line because it just chaff it up. That conger eel there swam back. I hope it's shown in a video because it messed about on the surface for a little bit, swimming backwards, and then eventually put its head down and went away. But see, it looked looked for a minute there like it wasn't going to go, didn't it? Yeah. Now let's get another bait down there because I won't mind a link. Yeah, if you want. There you go. James has got another lovely male cuckoo wrasse. Yeah. Oh, baby conger eel. Can 
this little tiny scrap eel here took a bigger bait than the last one. It's just the edges of a flapper just sticking outside of its mouth. Yeah. That took a 12 volt and a full scad flapper. Oh, I just hit my back. Right. Yeah, these traces, they're £200 mono. And, uh, 12 volt cooks and raw meat hooks. Use any big hooks, really. I like, um, I like the meat hooks because they're strong. And, uh, but if I'm, if I'm fishing predominantly, if I'm going wreck fishing for big ling and big conger, I often use like a Mustad O'Shaughnessy, you know, 12 or 14 or. Just because it's a bigger rook with a bigger shank. Get, get better bait presentation. And also, a Mustad O'Shaughnessy of this size would have a shank that was about half an inch longer. Sometimes it's easier getting the hook out when it's got a bit of a longer shank. Start bringing yours in from all the way over here now. There you go. Just like that. Dancing round each other. That was it. James was saying, I'm not getting any bites. The reason you're not getting any bites is because you've got a poor cod on there. Can I throw them back? If you want. Poor cod are often confused with pouting. The way that you can tell when you've had one in your hands is with a poor cod, you've got scales all over your hands. Pouting, you don't. Oh, yeah. Conger, I think. Big I'd like it to be a big ling. Because if it is a ling, it's going to be a good one. Conger. But he's hooked nice. He's hooked okay. Come on, back you go. Don't mess about. There he goes. We'll get everything tidied away. I'll see you in a second to pull the anchor up. Proper fish on here, James. I don't know what this is. This might, might actually be our day. This is a real scrapper, this one. That. <laughs> uh. that is an absolute monster bullus taken on well you can even see the hook no 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 stop it stop it you can see the hook in the corner of its mouth there that was on a little tiny scratching ras rig yes. get some line off please James okay yeah I thought there'd be bullus on this mark that was the last little tiny scrapper ragworm and a piece of mackerel that was about an inch long. Yeah, it's had a flipping monstrous great bullus. How crazy. I said when I hooked it, I was like, this is a scrapper, this one. I'm trying to hold it up so it relaxes. <laughs> Little one hook ras rig that's had about 
25 RAS on it already. And that was the hook. Right, you can tell me a little bit about bullos, can't you? Yeah. You know that it's a male because yep. of... The claspers. Where are the claspers? There. Yeah. So that shows you it's a male because it's got them two claspers. Mm -hmm. You can tell it's a bullos by those two bits at the front. These two nasal flaps here, can't yep. you? And also by how big it is because it is a big yep. one, isn't it? And how dark, how many... Look at its eyes. Spots there. Yeah, they have they have got slightly different colours mm -hmm. to uh, to dogfish, don't they? Yep. And a lot more teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's go jump back up the side. Come jump up here. Let's get the anchor up. <laughs> it was literally like the last scrap of bait. James had just said, oh, I'm a bit tired, I'll fish that one. That counts as man. It counts as ours. All oh, right, it counts as ours. That, that counts as man. It counts as Get ourselves swung back and we'll get the baits out. We're at a mark now to try and catch some thornback rays and some bullhus. And James has made up his own rigs. These are James's There's own one. rigs. And here is the other one. So we're going to bait these up and cast them out. And what are you going to be casting? Just be careful you don't be careful. Be careful you don't run over these lines. Right there. Where were we, James? What were we saying? We were saying we jump were up one here then. That yep. Right, hold on. There we go. We've come to an area now where we're going to be catching some thornback rays and some bullhus. And James has made up his own special bullhus and thornback ray rigs. What's this one? It's his uh, mackerel lead two lined rig. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so we're going to clip this onto the rod. It's already got some lead. It's got a little sab and egg bead on it. Yep. We'll put some mackerel onto there, aren't we? Yep. Cast that one out. And your other one is. Yep. These are all James's own designs. He thought them up and thought, I tell you what, this is what we need to do. So this one you just clip onto there, and this one has got a lead right above the hook, hasn't it? Yep. Well, there we go. With a smaller hook above the lead. You just back and put there a second. All I've done is I've just cut up a couple of pieces of scad, try the scad first and then try the mackerel. That's the plan. James has got his own tackle box, which stuff seems to filter its way out of my tackle box into your tackle box. Yeah. He's got his own tackle box and he makes up all of his own rigs, so this is what we're going to be doing. This rig was quite a complicated rig, I didn't understand it properly. So James is baiting it up. You gonna come show me it now? Wow! Gonna jump up here and show. Yeah, that is a special one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do have four rods out. James has got three, and I've got one. There's a couple of spots today where we've, if we'd have, but I just wanted to fill up with mackerel. We could have had, could have had 200 mackerel today. Mackerel and scad. We could have fished with the feathers and just pulled them out all day for fun. Yeah, I'm really happy about that congrail. The um, the gear that we've been using today, like I say, the two jigging setups. This one is a battalion slow pitch jig with a 300 fathom low profile, and this one is a conflict jigging. And this is the 400. So two different sizes. Like I said, this one, I used this one in Norway and it nailed it. And this one, I've had ling on it on the wrecks, but it's better off in the reefs. The bigger setup that I had, the one that I had the congas on, this one here is a regiment solid carbon and it's a 20 to 30. And they, yeah, they struggle. I mean, it managed it, it did it. But if I'd have been on a wreck, them fish should have been back in a wreck. It'll do a ling, but big congas, yeah, it, it struggles. 
So if I was going out targeting congas properly, I would use a 3050 rather than a 2030. But that's a Finnor Marquesa and it's a 16. And the braid on this is 50, 50 pound braid. And on all the other rods, I think it's 25. Bit of nerdy information for you. James has got a bite on one of his rigs. Dogfish on James's rig. He's at it again. Gurnard! Yes! Oh. So it's also a Gurnard rig. <laughs> oh my god, on the top hook! Yeah, and your little teaser hook that you were talking about has worked that perfectly. It shows you it works. It does show me it works. Come up. Oh, look at that. That's just fallen off. You did such a good oh, job bringing that up. That was lucky. Come there you go. Oh. James, that absolutely proves that your rig works. Mm -hmm. oh. And it's real true. Where's all this slop come from? About. Yeah, a lovely red gurnard. We haven't had any gurnard yet today, have we? No. I don't know if it shows up properly, but that eye is beautifully blue, yeah. isn't it? It's really blue. Mm. A little, a little croaker. Look at the sounds. No. These little legs here, they actually, it's an extension of their pectoral fins and they walk about on the seabed on them. Go on, toss him back. There he goes. Well done. <laughs> when they're angry, they just bite everything. There you go. James's bullus rig has caught him a monster great bullus. That was his one with a little mackerel bit on it. There you go, see? You'll have to start designing your own rigs, James. Because these ones have absolutely nailed it. Yeah. yeah and it looks like we have every dinghy in Cornwall about to come and do a race up here. There must be two, four, six, eight, ten. Must be 50 of them. Oh, the line is a little shredded. That's why you use strong line. I'll tell you what, yeah. made this rig, designed it, tied all the knots, cut all the line, everything like that, all by yourself. Well done. Yeah. Put the rod down to your right hand side. Which, reach down and get the line. This side? That's your left hand side, James. Reach down and get the line. Slide your hand right down the line now. Twist it round. Lift it up. Good man. Look, watch. Pull it in like this. Yeah. And James, watch, look. Yeah. Take your hand. Slide your hand down. Wrap it round. Lift it. Oh, it's a dark bullet. It's a very dark bullet, but it's hooked in, hooked in the wheel. Yeah, we can just... Yeah, look, see. All right, you can do it. Well done. I waited right until the last minute to all kick off. Here we have, hopefully I'll be able to show you the difference between a bullhuss and a dogfish without one of them having my hand off. Bullhuss has got these nasal flaps, dogfish does not. Also, you can see by the shape of their heads, bullhuss here, have got a wider head than dogfish. Their spots, yeah, they can be quite similar. Yeah, we've managed to nail quite a few bullhuss right at the very end. Are you gonna, are you gonna chuck your one back, that dark yeah. one? This one is a little bit darker everywhere. 
It's usually indicative of them living in a reef. Good man. Now, I have absolutely no idea who won that. Yeah. You think it was you and I think it was me. I won't know until I go through the editing. But what I do know is that you, on your homemade rigs, yeah. rigs that you designed yourself, tied yourself, baited yourself, you're wiping your hand on my back. Yeah. <laughs> managed to catch some cracking fish. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later. See you later. See you later. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the Fish Locker YouTube channel, where we have hundreds of videos from our adventures just like this one. We upload new videos every Sunday evening, so don't forget to click subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Let's go!